and development and humanitarian kind of sectors. Um, and I'm going to start with the near term, the short term, and kind of work out into some of the kind of longer term risks that we've already been kind of hearing about. So uh, the first one is exchange rate. Uh, so uh, about four o'clock in the morning on the 24th of June, the pound hit um, one dollar thirty-two. Uh, uh, no, one dollar thirty-four. Uh, about half past six this morning, it was about one dollar thirty-two. So it's continuing to go down. So unlike the bounce back in terms of the stock exchange, the uh, foreign exchange situation is continuing to be bad and if not uh, get worse. Why is that important for an organisation like Oxfam? Most of our income is in either pounds or euros and most of our expenditure overseas is either in dollar or very closely related dollar or currencies that are very closely related uh, to dollars. So somewhere between 10 and 20% greater expenditure kind of requirements in our programs uh, arrived last Thursday and looks like it's here to stay. Uh, so that means that um, we can either cut back from, on our programs, which we clearly don't want to do, or we need to try and find that money somewhere. Uh, so we operate with a fairly kind of lean set of, kind of um, uh, reserves, uh, and those reserves are going to quite quickly be uh, uh, defeated by that level of shift in terms of having to uh, the next time we have to send money to uh, uh, top up program expenditure in countries where the uh, currency situation has changed dramatically. Um, recession, uh, as Carl says, recession is probably on the way. Uh, any of you who were kind of looking at the newly published um, uh, data in terms of um, direct debit cancellations will see that actually over the last year, despite everything, cancellations of direct debits didn't really shift very much. The really big impact that that analysis has now been going on for 12 years shows that it's recession that really drives up um, regular giving uh, <coughs> cancellation rates. So for organisations with lots of regular givers like Oxfam, recession is another route to uh, uh, f uh, financial kind of difficulty. Um, EU fund, uh, funding. Uh, Oxfam in the financial year 1415 uh, received something like 40 million pounds from uh, the EU, uh, both in terms of development funding and humanitarian, three quarters of it uh, uh, humanitarian funding. So particularly for things like the kind of refugee crisis, really significant funding coming from the EU on that. Now, will we still be able to access that? That depends on the kind of um, settlement that eventually happens. Clearly, over the next two years, nothing changes in theory, but applying for EU funds, uh, I can't imagine, is not going to get more difficult uh, uh, for uh, UK-based organisations. Um, if we're in the EEA, the European Economic Area, in theory, um, uh, international um, uh, UK NGOs could still apply for EU funding, but it all depends on single market, um, free movement, all that kind of stuff. So I think the key word, as people have also said, is uncertainty. Uh, so that's potentially £40 million, 10% of our income disappearing off somewhere. Now, you could say, well, there's some upside. There's um, a lot of that <coughs> development funding comes from the UK government. Must be a sum proportion of that £350 million a week. Um, so in theory, that gets kind of retained by the uh, UK government and distributed through the Department for International uh, 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 Development. However, the UK's commitment to the 0.7% of GDP, which is the UN um, target, the UK is the only G7 country to have ever reached that level, uh, and it was a key commitment from David Cameron, part of his kind of uh, attempt to, or part of his mission to detoxify the Conservative brand was to demonstrate that they had a kind of continued commitment to growing and uh, securing that UN target for international aid. Um, uh, in March this year, the Mail on Sunday uh, launched a petition that quickly got to over 100,000 people triggering a debate in Parliament uh, uh, arguing against the UK's commitment to 0.7. In this changed and fractured world, uh, and Laura talked about it in terms of the, the constituency of people who feel left behind and um, uh, uh, voted to leave. 
And the commitment to aid is not high up on a lot of those people's agenda, understandably, in terms of their experience. But what does that mean to actually how significant a player is the UK going to be in terms of international development and international aid going forward? On one positive note, that sense of a dislocated, disengaged uh, uh, community um, does talk to some of the issues that Oxfam has been uh, raising over the last kind of couple of years, particularly around the growing inequality that exists in the UK and around the world. Um, but all, however much I try to be positive about that as a, as a new potential kind of political realisation, that feels like it's quite a long way off.